you have to go back and sing the songs of the old church because those are the songs that brought us over. Songs of my grandmother, songs of my great-grandmother, songs of my auntie and my uncle, songs like trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I had to cry I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. We do it when you can make it. Oh, yes, I will. You can make it. 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 Yes, you can. You can make it. I believe you will. You can make it. I know you will. Can make it. 
praise the Lord, Judah Christian Center. We're so grateful to be here with you for yet another virtual worship experience. And we have joy from the Lord this morning. Have you got joy this morning? Come on, brother Juan. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you for your joy. Thank you for the joy of the Lord that is our strength, Lord. Father God, because you've given us joy that the world can't take away, we know and we are confident that you will make a way, Lord. Even when it seems that there will be no way, you, God, will make a way, Father God. In the face of calamity, in the face of unemployment and uncertainty, Lord, we trust you with our lives. Because you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we sing this song to you. Minister King. Yeah. 
I'm going to make this your declaration. Waymaker, Waymaker miracle work, promise to keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are, you are here. Turning lives around, I worship. I worship you. Come on, y'all sing along with us. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Somebody help me say, you are here, mending every heart, mending every heart, yeah. I worship you, worship you, Lord, I worship you, oh, we make, we make, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. Sing along with us even at home. At your kitchen, you just lift up your voice right now. God can hear you right there. Somebody worship the Lord. Oh, now we're getting ready to take this thing higher. We're getting ready to go higher. Hey, put some harmony on and tell them who he is. Way make up, way make miracle work. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. 
even during the times that we're living in, the pandemic and all of the racial and the social unrest, God is a keeper of promises. Hitherto the Lord has brought us, and we can give the Lord a praise. Come on, wherever you are, just reach your hands out to the screen. Come on, hallelujah. My God, that is who you are. He's your God too. He's my God too. Come on, let's lift our hands and just begin to worship. Come on, lift our hands and just begin to worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, we praise you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship experience. We are so glad to have you. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here today. And we hope that you will join us next week. Yes, for our parking lot praise service part two. We had such a wonderful time on Pentecost Sunday. And we're hoping that you will join us next Sunday on a Father's Day for a Father's Day parking lot praise. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's get to the word of God. We honor overseer. Honor everyone in your rightful place. We salute all of our young people who are making their voices heard their voices known certainly praying for the families of those who have been impacted by everything that is going on amen and that is what the lord spoke to me and said i should preach about teach about prophesy about today in this message the power of a knee the power of a knee. Go with me, if you will, to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. And the word of the Lord reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very, very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. The prophet says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, <laughs> a rumbling, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be unto God. As I said, our current context 
is speaking loudly to all of us. We are a people that is watching the world transformed right before us. And we see here in our text very similar to what we are witnessing in our world, a valley of dry bones. And it is up to us as the people of God to say to the bones in the valley and to say to ourselves, can these bones live? I ask you as we look at the pandemic, as we look at the economic crises that we crisis that we have as we look at the social unrest as we look at the political landscape and the leadership uh, deficits that we seem to have and I ask you can these bones live and I submit to you as was the prophet's job in Ezekiel chapter 37 that God said to him son of man prophesy to the bones. And so wherever you may find yourself along the trajectory of the challenging and difficult times that we are facing, I say to you, prophesy to the bones around you. Prophesy to your family. Prophesy to your finances. Prophesy to your faith. Prophesy to your fitness. Prophesy to your future and declare that not only will uh, 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 tendons and sinew and skin come upon you, but breath will once again, hallelujah, breathe through you and you will breathe out God in the earth. And yes, the bones that were once very dry and the bones that were once dead shall live again. Come on and say, these bones shall live. Hallelujah. I know we've been waiting for a long time for justice, for equality, for, for restoration, for restitution. I know we've been waiting a long time, some of us in our spiritual condition, for deliverance, for victory. Oh, my God. God uh, for the manifestation of the promise but I, I don't want you to lose hope today I want you to stay close to Ezekiel where he had the faith to do what God said uh, the faith to say what God said the faith to see what God saw you've got to be confident in what God said and what God sees because you will not always feel like you are blessed you will not always feel like your bones are going to live, but you got to know it for yourself. Son of man, can these bones live? And we know that Israel was going through a time where they had fallen away from God, and, and they needed to be comforted because they had fallen into the judgment of God, uh, and God walked him through about back and forth, he says, uh, uh, among the bones. Yes, Lord. And God, overseer, often says, will bless us in the same waters. Hallelujah. The same place that dried up on us. Yes, Lord. The same place that dwindled away on us. The same place that died. Oh, my God. Uh, hallelujah. On us, God will cause it to live again. I dare you to lift your hands and just say, come on and live again. Uh, hallelujah. Tell your joy to live again. Tell your praise to live again. Tell your, tell your life, your spirit. Hallelujah your hope oh my God to live again bless the name of the Lord and indeed he prophesies at first he tells God only you know only you know but God said I am the sovereign Lord and I want you to say to these bones I'm going to make the breath enter into them and I will make life come into them 
but I want you to prophesy. I can't get off of that. We have to prophesy, and we know that prophecy is about more than houses and cars and, and husbands and wives and bling bling and all of that. Prophecy is about the mandate of God. It is about speaking the mind of God, the word, the will, and the way of God. If you speak the word of God, then you will know the will of God, and if you know the will of God, then you will follow the way of God. God, and the way of God will take you back to God. And when a man's ways please God, he will make even his enemies be at peace with him. So we've got to prophesy to our current context, people of God. We prophesy with the way we live. We prophesy with the things we say. We prophesy with the way we serve. We prophesy with the way we show up in the various arenas of our lives. We prophesy. We got to prophesy. We got to prophesy. So my assignment today is to contextualize the coming together of these bones. My God. Uh, the coming together of these bones. And uh, these bones came together after a few attempts my God, if this was a revival service overseer, I, I would break that down about how many, uh, sometimes it takes more than one attempt to get it right. You got to come to the altar. You got to go to God more than one time. And the devil will have you feeling bad because you didn't get it the first time or because the answer didn't come after you tried the first time. But he had to prophesy a few times. God had to scaffold it for him. God had to break it down for him a little bit but finally there in verse number 10 it says that he prophesied as he was commanded and the breath came and the life came and they stood up as an army the breath came the life came and they stood up as an army the breath came the life came and they stood up as an army. I just want to pause right here to tell you, catch your breath. My God, uh, catch your breath. It's been a but it's been a bit much lately. Oh Lord, it's been a whole lot going on lately. But I want you to take a few minutes and catch your breath. Yes, Lord, catch your breath from being overwhelmed. Catch your breath from being uh, misunderstood. Catch your breath from being at the end of your rope, and then let the life come into you. The the power of God, the ruah breath of God, come back into to you and then stand up hallelujah you gotta stand up and be counted you gotta stand up hallelujah and let the world know that you're still here you were down for a couple of days down for a couple of weeks you had to take a few minutes take a few months off but it didn't matter you're still here the breath came and the life came and tell somebody I'm standing up now and when we stand up as individuals uh, we comprise the Bible says a a vast army. One can chase a thousand, uh, but two can put ten thousand to flight. And if we all come together, Lord, have mercy. We just left Pentecost. We just left it. And when they were all on one accord, that's it. That's that agreement. You have to come into agreement. They were all on one accord. Uh, then the power of God could come. And that's what we see in in our society today, black men and women, white men and women, the Asian, it doesn't matter, Hispanic, Latino, it doesn't matter, all walks of life, all statuses of life, politicians, policemen, hallelujah, it does not matter. We are all standing up because what we saw, oh Lord, have mercy on that camera and on that video clip, it took our breath away. Lord, have mercy and the life seeped out of us and I don't know about you but I had a few moments where I felt hopeless I had a few moments where I felt like here we are again and how can we be here again but God said prophesy and keep prophesying and keep prophesying Lord help me preach today and as you prophesy the breath will return and as the breath returns then the life will come and you can stand up and we can comprise an army 
But I want to talk for my remaining time with you today about the knee. The knee. Somebody say the knee. When I was a little girl, we used to sing a song about how the neck bone, the, the ankle bone, my foot bone connected to my ankle bone, and my ankle bone connected to the leg bone, and my neck, leg bone connected to my knee bone, and my knee bone connected to my thigh bone. And we would sing the song that resonated or that related to this text about the coming together. And that's what we see. That's what we see, the coming together, the coming together of things. And sometimes self-discovery leads to the dismantling of ideologies, of paradigms, of, of patterns of belief and patterns of behavior that no longer serve the old you. Because you can't go through the process of self-discovery and become a new you and still cling to things that benefited the old you because sometimes those things no longer fit into the pattern of the new you. Lord, have mercy. And so we are coming together, and for many of us, it seems like a dismantling. But why, Pastor Vita, have you chosen the power of a knee to be the focus of all of the bones that were in that valley that day that God and the prophet were, were discovering and surveying and prophesying to? Because of here, right here in verse number 10, where it says, they stood up on their feet. And I submit to you that the knee is what makes it possible for the top part of the body, Lord have mercy, to connect to the bottom part of the body and to be able to stand up on your feet. Yes, Lord. Uh, let me give you a little biology and anatomy here. The knee is one of the largest and most complex joints of, uh, uh, of the body. A joint is the point at which parts of a structure are joined together. And the knee joins uh, the thigh bone or the femur to the shin or the tibia. And the smaller bone that runs alongside the tibia is the fibula. And the kneecap is the patella. And they are all the other bones. Uh, they and all the other bones make up the knee joint, Lord have mercy. You ought to just pat your knee and say, hello, knee joint. And so when the Bible says here that he will cause uh, sinews and flesh to come upon them and, and that there was a rattling, there was a shaking in the earth, that's what we have experienced the last couple of weeks. We've heard, we've, we've seen and heard and experienced the rattling and the rumbling of the earth as the bones were coming together but it was the knee joint, uh, hallelujah, that, uh, that joined together the top part of the body that is connected to the thigh bone, uh, to the bottom part of the body that is connected to the feet. Lord, have mercy. And the tendons connect the knee bones uh, to the leg bones uh, so that they can move uh, the knee joint. Uh, and if you are going to move as an army, if you are going to move in formation, you have to move by bending your knee. Lord, have mercy. You have to move by bending your knee. Y'all can't see me right now, but I'm bending my knee back and forth. The top part of my body where there is knowledge, where there is my voice, where there is my vision, where there is my passion, where there is my determination and my 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 life, my livelihood, not livelihood, with my very life essence and my heart, all of that is up here. But if I don't have a knee joint to connect um, this part of me to the bottom part of me that will move me, hallelujah, to the beat of the drum that will say, the landscape of my world, the landscape of what I see. See, hallelujah has got to change. Sometimes I'm prophesying about right. 
righteousness. Sometimes we prophesy about holiness. Sometimes we prophesy about sanctification. Sometimes we prophesy about discipleship and obedience. And then sometimes we prophesy about justice and equality. But whatever we are doing as an army, it requires our feet and it requires the knee joint. Somebody say the knee joint. I'm glad for the knee joint, the knee joint, the knee joint. Absolutely necessary. And so the ligaments join the knee bones to provide stability to the knee. The tendons God is referring to in the Bible are flexible but inelastic cords that are strong, fibrous collagen tissue attaching muscle to bone. Lord have mercy. If this was a Sunday school class, we would really dissect that and break it down. But you need everybody. You need everything. You need all parts to the army. And some of us have a less elasticity than others. <laughs> some of us don't give as much. Uh, uh, we don't have as much leeway as others. But you need those who can see the gray areas and you need those who are pretty much black and white. You need to, you need all of that. You need all of that. But, 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 but let me hate and let me hasten here. And so we see that the knee is important to the moving of the body. And as a symbol, bowing of the knee is a common gesture with a powerful message or meaning. As children, we were trained to bow on bended knee to say our prayers at night. People bow the knee before royalty to show respect and honor. The bowing of the knee shows one's deference to show uh, let them go before you or that you esteem them to a higher position than your own. The phrase bowing of the knee itself can refer to a physical act of kneeling or it can be figurative in its implication. Women often have to get on their knees in the childbearing process. Yes, even in the 21st century, women get on their knees in the delivery room to birth a baby. Lord have mercy. If this was revival, I would talk about the babies that we have birthed in the spirit that didn't come out easy and we had to get on our knees. I'm talking about the power of your knee, the difference that your knee can make. Lord have mercy. Mothers rock babies to sleep on their knees. Delilah, yes, Lord, seduced Samson on her knee. And recent images of people on their knees have brought other implications for us that have taken this phrase and this symbol to a whole nother level. Colin Kaepernick was on his knee during the national anthem to protest how African Americans were treated in the custody of police. Uh, public officials and police officers have been seen on their knees to show support and solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Black men and women are forced to their knees or often dragged on their knees to patrol cars or police stations. People have been seen on their knees recently kneeling in prayer, asking God for help and seeking God for divine guidance. And yes, the infamous picture of a policeman with his knee on the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes and 46 seconds. He held his knee there determined to subdue a human being as if he were an animal. And we heard the words of Reverend Al Sharpton as he resonated what we have all felt and thought
God in one way or another during our lifetime. And especially recently, get your knee off of our necks. But we are not limited to uh, recent history when it comes to the power of a knee. Because the Bible backs up our premise that the knee is not only powerful, but teaches us powerful lessons. Luke 5 and 8, Simon Peter fell at the feet of Jesus saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. 2 Kings 1 and 13, the captain begged on his knees for the life of his men before prophet Elijah. Matthew 20 and 20, then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, bowing down and making a request of him that they would sit on either side of him. Lord, have mercy. The knee is powerful, y'all. Genesis 30 and 3, Rachel tells Jacob, here is my maid Bilhah. Go into her that she may bear on my knees uh, that through her I may have children. Matthew 27 and 29 uh, says, at, as an act of mockery, after they twisted a, a crown of thorns on his head, and after they gave him a reed in his hand, they, they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. First King 8 and 54, when Solomon had finished praying, his entire prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose from the altar and from kneeling on his knees uh, with his hands raised to heaven. Uh, Philippians 2, 10 and 11 says, uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Uh, and then Jesus Christ himself shows us the power of the knee. In Luke 22 and 41, Jesus withdrew from them and went about a stone's throw and he knelt down and began to pray. I submit to you that you too could give me your own testimony of when you experienced, uh, of when you leveraged uh, the power of a knee. Lord have mercy. Come on and just give me some hearts. Come on and just put love there. Come on and just put, put some love in the comments uh, and say I know about the power. I know about the power of a knee. The knee has helped me to live. Like in the text, the knee can determine whether you live or die, whether you walk or remain still, whether you are able to, to show up or continue to be mute and inept. And so I would like to give you three considerations for a powerful knee, and I'm finished. Number one, you can pray on your knees. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Whatever you need from God, it's available with the power of a praying knee. With the power of a praying knee. Set aside time and space to meet God on your knees. I understand we're in a modern society and we have all kinds of things where we can access the, the resemblance of prayer. But get on your knees every now and then. The power of a praying knee. Number two, you can protest. Get your knee off our necks. You can protest on your knees. And with that, the knee is not bent, but the knee is used to move. Like that army that stood up in Ezekiel 37. My God, my God. My God, my God. They stood up. The breath came, the life came, and they stood up into a vast army. So you have to use 
the power of your knee, the power of your knee to protest, to move. The top part of you, your brain, your eyes, your mouth, your ears, your heart, your life, your soul, your passion. You have to move that in the form of protest. And then lastly, not only a praying knee or protesting knee, but a knee that paves the way. Don't forget that the same way that ancestors and generations before us made it possible for us to be where we are today, that we have to do the same thing for the ones who are around us now. Let's round them up. Let's rally behind them. My God, my God. And let's do it for future generations. We can say this far and no more. And we will take care of our business. We will take care of our finances. We will try to be strong in faith, strong in family, strong in finances, fitness, future, and fellowship. Proverbs 8, 13 and 22 says, Blessed is the man or the woman who leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And an inheritance is not just monetary wealth. It's all the areas where we are striving to be strong. Use your knee to pave a way of strength for current and future generations. The same knee. We've seen mockery. We've seen recognition of majesty. The same knee that one police officer knelt in death overpowering George Floyd could have stood up and spared his life because the knee is powerful, literally and figuratively. The knee shows strength whether you are kneeling down or standing up. Both positions require the strong and undeniable power of a knee. I want to pray for you today. If you would just bow your head, bow your heads wherever you are. Allow me to pray. Because a lot of us feel very weak in our knees right now. We feel as if life has thrown us so many curveballs in 2020 and maybe any, even in previous years. We don't know how to stand. We feel weak. We feel unprepared. We feel underachieved. And so I want to prophesy, as Ezekiel did to those dry bones, I want to prophesy to every dry bone in your life and command that sinew and tendons and ligaments and joints and skin would come together. Come on, come on. Hey, koshanda re satababashe, ki andaro siyatati masha. Come together now in Jesus' name. No more faltering, no more faltering. No more weak knees. That's what I hear in the Holy Spirit. No more weak knees. Stand as a strong army. Stand as the general that you are, the colonel that you are, the soldier that you are. Stand in your position. Stand at attention and prophesy to the areas of your life. Use the power of your knee. I prophesy right now that you will from this day forward feel strengthened, feel strengthened by the power of a praying knee. Feel strengthened by the power of a knee of protest. Feel strengthened to be, to use your knee to pave a way for future generations. Eka, eka, andareza. Come on, let's worship. 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 This is a prophetic moment. We're living in prophetic times. We're living in prophetic times. This is a prophetic moment. You have got to grab hold to this revelation. You are powerful. Those bones came together and became an army. And it was a comfort to the people of Israel that their day had come. Their sins were forgiven. Their mistakes were washed away. That God had given them another chance. And I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus, as those would stretch their hands forth 
and receive this anointing even now to stand in the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost by, by sheer nature of their relationship with you. Hallelujah. That they would stand in the power of the knee. Jesus himself knelt and prayed. He went a stone's throw in the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed. He taught his disciples to pray and he led them in prayer. He modeled prayer. And so I'm praying for these, your people, even now. That those who are weak, <laughs> when I'm weak, they will say I'm strong. Those who are sick will say I'm healed. Those who are perplexed will say I am at peace. Be it now unto you in Jesus' name. Oh, I feel God in this place. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And I don't want you to miss a moment, miss the opportunity to connect with God through faith in Jesus Christ, I am asking you to repeat after me so that you can express, Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he is the son of God, born to a virgin, lived and died, and he arose with all power in his hand. That's our confession as Christians. If you believe that and will confess it today, you too can be named among us as followers of Jesus Christ. If you want to be a Christian, if you want to get it right with God, hallelujah. So repeat after me, God, save me. I am a sinner. Oh, I'm a backslider. I want to get it right. I want to be right. I confess my sins. And I accept Jesus as my Savior. I am right now saved. Father, those that have confessed Jesus and have turned their back on sin and Satan, I ask that you would cover them, that you would seal them until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you don't have to feel anything necessarily. You don't even have to be in a room with anybody else. You are, by the very nature of your faith, saved. And I am asking you to take one more step, that you would send us an email and let us know that you got saved today, that you made a commitment to Jesus today. And if you are looking for a church home, if you are looking for a church home, Judah Christian Center is here for you. We have a physical location, but we also have a powerful virtual ministry. And you can become a member of our church, a part of our ministry, by, by texting us, by emailing us, all of that information, by going on to our website. All of that information is now on our stream. And we can take you in. You don't have to wait for Corona to be over to get you a church family. We will take you in today. Come on, Judah. Let's put it in the comments and tell them they can come today. You can come today. I would love to be your pastor. I would love overseer. would love to be your senior pastor and spiritual father. Amen. Let's get ready to give. Get your devices out. Get your devices out. Get your phones. Get your, your iPads. However you are giving today, let's get them out. Get them out. We are giving together. We give together as if we are in the sanctuary. We give together. Amen. Let's raise a giving song. Amen. For everybody in your home, don't log off just yet. Let's give together. Let's give together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tithe and offering. Our tithe belong to the Lord. 10% belongs to God. Members of Judah, you know what you've been asked to do. Hallelujah. You know what you've been asked to do. Amen. You can give three ways. 
Three ways you can give. You can give to the church, you can give to the pastor, or you can give to our Vision 2020. You can give to the church, Judah Christian Center, through tithes and offerings for our general expenses, or you can give to Overseer Marvin E. McCoy in a pastor's love offering. You can also give to Vision 2020, which is, will finance our vision for this year, help us to reach the community, amen, and to do ministry in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, on behalf of Judah Christian Center Church, amen, hallelujah. Once you give, just put it in there, say, I gave, I gave, I gave, hallelujah, amen. Tithe belongs to the Lord, but it is really out of love and out of covenant and out of commitment that we render our tithes. We don't have a tithe police. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. Amen. Shaken together, running over, back in good measure. That's how I'll give it back to you. One more time as we're giving. Come on, let's give together as a people. Give and I'll give it back to you. Give and I'll give it back to you. Oh, give and I'll give it back to you. Press down. Shake together running over back in good measure that's how I'll give it back back to you I'll give it back to you yes I will give it back to you yes I will that's how I'll give it back to In abundance, I'll give it back in abundance. Oh, that's how I'll give it back to you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and his countenance. Amen. To be with you. And may you never, ever, ever, ever forget the power of a knee. God bless. You can't.